Welcome to the Creative Kobold. My name is Gaira and today we'll be painting up Martha the Ogre Mercenary from the Kingpin of Dunkeldorf. Martha the Ogre Mercenary is the only Kingpin of Dunkeldorf miniature cast in resin instead of metal, aside from bits of terrain. Her right arm, along with the club, comes as a separate piece that needs to be glued onto the rest of the miniature. I've already done this and also at this point primed the mini. Something I do for all my ogre miniatures is give them the same skin tone using the AK Interactive Skin Tone set I have. This is also the same way I painted the Dunkeldorf Claudia Mini, uh, starting with a red base coat and then gradually working my way up through the five different paints, ending with the highlights. I stop working on the skin a bit to add black eyelashes, it'll make things easier later. Painting all these layers of skin on top of each other isn't necessarily the best way of doing things though. It might have been a good idea to just start with the base color most places, oh well. Alright, I've gotten a lot of work on the skin done, for now I'll be stopping at the mid-tone color. That way if I make a mistake and get some unwanted colors on the skin I can easily just paint over it later. I'm happy to leave it uh, for now, we'll come back to it. Let's get started on her trousers, I'm just starting with the darkest shadows and working my way lighter. The dagger hanging from her belt are certainly making it tricky to get into all the areas. The same goes for that arm with the club that I glued on, you might find it easier to paint them separately before gluing them together.
When I paint, I usually just paint what I want to. Painting is supposed to be fun, and I don't feel like getting all the base colors on before starting shading, so I just go at it with the brighter colors on her trousers. Wrinkles and such are usually fun to paint because they're easy to do and gives you the instant reward of making the mini start looking good. I think painting what you want instead of following a recipe is a good way to stay motivated. Getting some base color on the wooden parts will help me visualize where the miniature is going. Just a dark and slightly muted brown color. Same thing with the hair, I want her to be a graying blonde or something along those lines, so I start with a brown gray. And then I put some dark grey on the piece of mail on her hip. This will make it ready for a metallic overbrush later. Oh, what happened here? Well, it turns out I lost some video footage. Don't worry though, you missed less than what it looks like. I've put a dark green base on her shirt and painted it up to a mid-tone, and dry brushed a mix of light grey and beige on her hair, getting it one step closer to how I want it to look. 
I've also painted a dark grey base on her hat and I'm currently painting up to a mid-tone warm grey on it. Okay, at this point I figure it's a good idea to ready up most of the details. So I'm painting black shoes, belts and more. It's actually uh, not quite black but a very dark grey so it works well with the less saturated colors I'm using. And it's the same color I used to base her hat. I want that shield she's using as a belt buckle or codpiece or whatever to look the same as in the official art, so I base half of it in a dark brown and the other in a warm grey, making sure to get that deep into the cracks. Then I simply overbrush the grey with an almost white creamy color and the brown with a muted red. Then I highlight the muted red with a bright red and the creamy white with a pure white. The highlights go on top of the shield plus a bit into its main surface from around the edges of it. I start working on the wooden parts of the club and peg leg, again with a warm grey. It covers a bit more than I wanted, but that's okay, getting too much of the paint into the cracks. At this point I could either start over with the dark brown or switch to another technique. I choose the latter and just continue with the bright beige color for highlights. Once the paint on the club and peg leg is dry, I use a brown wash to work it back to looking like wood again. I'm 
I'm starting to work on some of the smaller details, adding brown to pouches and other pieces of leather, going from shadows to low highlights without spending too much time on them. Details are nice and adds a lot of character to a mini, but they shouldn't steal the attention. There's a lot happening around the waist of this character, and if we're not careful, we can end up drawing the viewer's eyes towards it instead of Martha's face. And unless you have a very specific idea you're working towards, you want the focus to immediately go to the face and work out from there. I'm using more grey on one of the daggers, as well as the skull and horn hanging from her belt. Ropes keeping the skull in place gets a bit of brown, and I add some dark grey to the stitches on her trousers. Then I use a colder off-white for the lighter tones on the skull and horn. That money pouch on her back gets a full treatment of leathery browns as well. Now I'm starting with some steel metallics. I've already overbrushed a piece of mail on her hip, and I'm continuing to add the same color to studs, guards and other details. At the same time, I'm trying to not cover all of the black, but sort of work with it to create a better metallic effect. I use a bit of silver metallic to get some small variation in certain areas. And finally I use a bit of black wash to bring out some of the details that got lost and also tone the metallics down a bit. Time to work on the shoes. I want these shoes to be brown, so I paint a dark brown over the black and work my way up. Though I want them to look nice, they're not supposed to attract any attention, so I don't give them any strong highlights, but instead just up to a mid-tone at max. It's generally a good idea to have gradually stronger and more highlights near the top and less near the bottom. I start adding some blue sheen to the black leather straps and belts she has. The club's spiked metal rings and the metallic braces on her peg leg is cleaned up with black.
The three-stringed wristband on her left arm gets a bit of treatment using a warm grey again. There's a bird skull on here that I paint off-white and a couple of feathers I'll be painting muted red and blue. Time to work on the eyes. I want her to be looking slightly downwards as if onto someone smaller than her, like a human for example. And then I just plop in a couple of circular dots that fits the direction. While the eyes dry, I go back to the metal bits on the club and peg leg and I start putting down some steel metallics, again keeping some of that black for shadows and such. This is a good time to start preparing that feather, so I get a brown with some red tone in it and start painting the top of the feather, then I sort of just overbrush with the same color on the inside, trying to keep the black already in the grooves. I paint the top with a muted red, keeping the previous color in the grooves, then I use a strongly saturated red around the edges and near the stem of the feather, to give it some vibrancy and volume. This is a very nice feather that she's wearing with a lot of pride. Shoelaces gets a creamy white paint, as does the band under her knee. The laces on her shirt I paint brown to complement the green. Now I basically blackline the areas where the skin and shirt meet to separate them a bit. I use a watered down black so the contrast isn't too hard, but feels more like a bit of shadow. If you've been annoyed by that unpainted ear, I'm finally getting to base coating it. The spiked brazier on her arm is also getting a bit of that metallic uh, treatment. Almost forgot about it. Alright, so back to the eyes. I was a bit unsure about what eye color to choose, but opted for yellow. So I put two yellow dots on top of the black dots, uh, ending up with a black ring around a yellow iris. Then I just put a tiny dot of black in the middle of that for the pupils. With so many details done, I feel like continuing with the skin. I do try to keep some of that base flesh color in some of the shadowy areas. We're just accentuating the existing shapes of the sculpt as always. 
I only deviate from the sculpt to give her a cleft chin because I want to break up that large area of skin on her face a bit and I think it'll look good. Skin tone doesn't immediately look great, but it will look decent eventually. Just gotta keep on painting. I'm loving that triple chin she's got, and decide to accentuate it a bit more. Such details just adds a lot of soul to a miniature.
Alright, now I can start with the actual highlights on the skin. I start with the face because that's the most fun part. Getting those cheekbones, eyebrow muscles, nose, lips and also a vertical line in the middle of her forehead to make her look a bit more serious than she already did. Also improving on that cleft chin. I add a tiny bit of highlight on the lowest chin fold before I start working on the shoulder. The shoulder is a bit intimidating. It's a very large surface and I don't want the highlights to become the main skin color instead. So I work slowly and carefully. At this point I feel like Martha is really coming together. We've still got some work left though. I continue working on the skin highlights, the back, the chest, the ear, the hands and the leg. With the skin highlights done, it's time to give her those eyebrows, using the same colors I painted her hair with. Then I start brightening her hair color more, especially in the areas where the light would hit the most.
Her tusks and other teeth get some off-white treatment with a pure white highlight. And now it's time to finish up that shirt. We're doing some edge highlighting on some of the folds here, but try to blend it inward so it doesn't look too hard or geometrical. I work the highlight onto folds and other areas of the shirt that would catch the most light with the brightest highlights painted on the upper left arm, breasts and belly while still trying not to overdo it. As with the skin highlight on the shoulder, I don't want this to be the main color. At this point Martha is basically finished, but there's one thing I really wanted to do with this mini and that's to give her freckles. So using the second darkest 
burgundy skin shadow tone, I start adding some uh, dots on her exposed shoulder and breast. I tried not to add too many or be too random about it, lest it ruins my skin paint job. The old adage, less is more, definitely seems to be true here. She gets uh, three freckles in a triangle on the top of each cheekbone. And that's it! Martha the Ogre Mercenary is finished. I decided to move slightly away from the official art for this one, but aside from a couple of details, it's not much difference than if she had a change of clothes. And I didn't want to do two miniature painting videos right after each other with the same color palette. I used the injection points under her legs as pins and put her on a black 40mm round base. I like my simple black bases. I'm very happy with how Martha turned out and I found a way to put her into my campaign. Having conceived a half-ogre child, the ogre clan condemned Martha to death. However, she managed to escape using her sharp wits, but not before her lower right leg had become someone else's supper. Having entrusted the safety of her child to a friend, she hopes to one day find him again. Until that day, she'll make a living working for the humans in the big city. So that was Martha the Ogre Mercenary from the Kingpin of Dunkeldorf. I'm looking forward to painting up more of the Dunkeldorf minis as well as other lines in future videos. I hope you enjoyed this video, remember to click the like button and why not subscribe as well. I usually reply to most comments so feel free to leave one of your own. And I'll see you in the next video.